Hello, my name is Carissa, and today I'm going to present how to make a APA 7 line chart in R. So to get started, I'm first going to load the packages I'm going to use. If you don't have a package already loaded, you can also see them over here. Um, you could run install.packages and then put the package name in quotes, and then you would go ahead and load the package itself. Um, so the first thing after I load my packages, I'm going to load my data. So here I'm just loading my data set. And then in this row, I'm going to go ahead and select the columns that I am interested in. Um, so this is saying that I'm selecting all the rows. I'm just uh, selecting columns one through four. And then for the sake of this example, I'm going to go ahead and um, add a group variable. Um, and I'm going to use the rep function. So what I'm saying here is I'm using rep and I have entered a set of group one and group two, and I wanna repeat each of these 15 times. So if I run this, it's going to give me um, group one and group two, each of them 15 times. So I could look at the head of the data I have ID, which is the participant. I have trial one, two, and three, which is response time, and I have group. Now to actually look at the data itself, um, we can describe it. Um, we can use the describe by function to describe the data by group. Um, and so here we have group one and group two. Uh, we can see that the um, the means of group one look like they're a bit higher than group two. So this would mean that group one has slower response times than group two. And then we have the standard deviation, median, and so on and so forth. Um, it looks like the standard deviations are pretty comparable. They're a little bit higher in group one. And it looks like we have 15 people in both groups, which we know because we just specified that. So, um, in order to plot line charts easier in R, we have to pivot the data from wide format to long format. So what does that mean? So the data currently is in wide format. That means that each person is a row. So person one has completed three trials and they're in group one. Long format creates a row for each um, dependent variable. So each person in this case would have three rows. So ID, the column ID would be one, 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 and then be trial one, trial two, trial three. And then all of the dependent variables would be in the same um, column, which makes it easier to plot. So we'll just go ahead and do it. I'm saying here, uh, I'm only using columns two through four because those are my um, dependent variable columns. And I'm gonna put the names to trial and the values to response time. So now I get something like this, where I have ID, again, ID 111, group one, trial one, two, three, and then I have the response times for those three trials. So now that my data is in long format, we can go ahead and plot it. So I'm gonna use the ggplot function. So the first thing we enter is our data set, the x-axis, I'm gonna put trial, the y-axis, response time, and then I'm grouping by, and I want the line type by and the shape of the line to all be um, by group. So this is going to group by group, and then it's going to assign a different line type by group, and then it's going to apply a different shape by group. To actually do a line plot, go ahead and use the stat summary function. Mean says I'm taking the mean of the um, trials for each group, and then I'm specifying line. And then for stat summary, again, we just enter the aesthetics, and I'm specifying that I want a point, at the mean. And then for the x-axis labels, I'm just going to go ahead and relabel the x lab to be trial, the y lab to be response time in milliseconds. And then I'm going to apply the APA theme, which is close to APA theme, but it's not quite an APA themed plot. So I make some additional modifications to make it APA. For example, um, APA plots are supposed to have bolded these titles. So I'm going to go ahead here and I'm just bolding the text for the y-axis and the x-axis. 
And then here I'm just rescaling the y-axis so that it has starts at zero and it goes to um, 1800 and then it has breaks as shown here. And then this expand function just makes it so that the plot takes up the entire, the inner part of the plot takes up the entire plot. Sometimes when you plot a bar chart, you'll get a little white gap in between the chart itself and your axis. And this um, will remove that. And then um, I put in some code here in case it's useful. Essentially, if you want to relabel your, um, your variables as they show in the um, in your like legend. So if you want to relabel the line type or the shape, if they're based on different variables, you can specify that here. Um, however, since I am just using group one and group two, there's no need for me to do that. Um, however, I did relabel the X axis tick marks because um, in my data trial one is like crushed together. So I um, relabeled it so there would be a space here, which isn't a big deal, but it's an aesthetic choice that I wanted to make. So we'll go ahead and plot it now. And yay, our plot looks something like this. Again, we have trial on the x-axis and we have trial one, trial two, trial three. We have response time on the y-axis. Um, and then we have our groups in our legend. So if we wanted to further um, make this an APA plot, we would you know, copy it out of R and we can go ahead and paste it. So now in Word, we can add the figure um, number and this is in bold. And then below that we have our title, which is in uppercase and italics. And then below the figure, we can add a note. Note is in italics. And then I added the total sample size as well as the sample sizes within each group. And then I just added a brief description as to what's occurring in the plot here. Um, I hope that was useful and I will see you next time.